For now, we are not sure about the parameters of the electric motor. And to be able to write a good controller for the motor, we need to identify it. Actually, we did build the motor model because we know what kind of components we need in a motor. The only thing that we are not sure about are the parameters. So that's why in this case we are using the parameter tuning method. So we know that these are the main components. However, we are not sure what are the parameters. We open up the parameter estimation tool. We need to specify the parameters that we want to tune. We need to specify the measurement data and what kind of optimization algorithm do we want to use. So these are the parameters that we need to specify in the tool. What do we have here? Here we have all the parameters that we are not sure about. The motor inductance, resistance, inertia, and so on. And here we have some experiment, some measurement data. We want to use this data for the parameter tuning. Before we start, we are interested to see how the current simulation look like, looks like. So I press this plot model response. This will run our model and we will see the results compared to the measurement data to see if we have a good fit or not. And for now, it's obviously not a good fit. So this is the simulation data and this is the measurement data. We do need to tune these parameters. So I will select the parameters. In this case, the parameters are already selected. So actually all the parameters, we have some initial values and we can also specify the minimum and maximum values. The smaller the range, the easier and faster it will be for the optimization algorithm to find the right values. Also make sure that you choose only ranges that are possible. So for example, is no such thing as a negative friction coefficient. So here we have the entire range, so from zero to plus infinite. However, the closer we can specify the initial value, the higher the precision here, and the smaller the range, the easier it will be to run the optimization algorithm. Then we need to specify the experiment data that we want to use. Here we have the measure data. And that's it. Some more options that are possible, we have in the optimization settings. What kind of optimization method do we want to use? And also, if it takes too long, we should think about parallel computing. You can use as many cores in your computer as you have, if you have parallel computing or if this is not enough, then you can use a cluster or some cloud service with several hundred cores. And that can speed up the optimization process by a lot. So now we have set up all our parameters. Let's do the estimation. So just press estimate. This will run several simulations and it will find the best parameters for us. And when, if we achieve the precision that we specified, it will stop. 
If we cannot achieve the precision that we specified, in that case it will stop after the maximum number of iterations that we specified. What's the difference between the measured and the estimated? What's one and what's the other? Okay, so the measured is we have the physical motor, we connected it to some kind of a measure measurement device and we run physical tests and we save that data to our computer. So this is just the measurement data from the real existing hardware. Simulated is the simulation of the model that we built in Simulink. There is another question. Uh, what, what parameter are you estimating here? Um, Ersh, there is another question. Um, if we don't have all the measurements from the physical system, can we somehow guesstimate part of the inputs and outputs in order to create somehow a simulation of the system? Yes, so if you, yeah. we don't have any measurement data, then we need to use the first principle modeling, obviously. So if we know our system well, but we don't have a prototype, then it's first principle modeling. So we just know what the value should be. We read that in the books. We compute that basing on, on physics. What is the mass of the element? If we do have some measurement data, then we can do this parameter tuning. So what is here in the measurement data? So in the measurement data, that's all that we have. So the input is zero until the first second, then it's five volts, then it's zero again. And we measure the position of the shaft. So we don't, don't have all the measurements. We don't need to have all the measurements, like every current, every voltage, everything. In this case, all what we have is the input voltage and the position of the shaft. And based on that, we can estimate the parameters. As you can see, only after a couple of iterations, we already have a really precise model. So to do this manually, to try to find out what, is the, what are the right parameters by trial and error, this would be a huge task, really difficult to do. But with this tool, it's done in a couple of minutes, only after a few iterations. Now, if we have a huge model with a lot of parameters, then we will need something called sensitivity analysis. So if we have like tens or hundreds of parameters, this approach will not work in this form because it will run forever. So it is important to pick the most important parameters and tune them first. And then if we don't get the precision that we want, we can add some other parameters. But how can we decide if, let's say, friction, inertia, or the resistance of the motor is more important? So for that, we can use sensitivity analysis. Just before I do that, I go back to my model and open up this DC motor. And here you can see all the parameters. So we have the electrical part. So here we have the armature resistance that we are not sure about, the armature inductance that we are not sure about, and the constant. And then on the mechanical parts is the inertia and the damping. So these were the parameters that we computed using parameter tuning. If we are not sure what parameters are relevant, then we can select sensitivity analysis.
we can specify what experiment to use and which parameters do we want to see if they are relevant or not. So we select them. And then we need some parameter combinations. So these are the initial ones. Actually, these are the tunes ones. But we want to generate some parameter sets. So I will go to generate values. And I want to generate random values. Here you can specify what kind of distribution want to use, normal distribution or uniform distribution or anything else, and what is the lower level and what is the upper level. And based on that, how many samples do we want to have? I will go with 10. This is not enough for this kind of analysis. However, if I choose more, then it will run for a significant amount of time. So I will just pick 10. And what it does randomly generates values between those, between those specified uh, distributions. So when I run this, this will be pretty much a Monte Carlo simulation. So now it will run all the combinations that we generated. And based on the statistics, we will try to find out which parameters are the most important. As I mentioned, this is not as crucial if we have only a couple of elements. However, if we have like hundreds and we don't know which one is more important, this is a great tool. So now it runs the different simulations and we get the dots. What is the correlation between a certain value of a parameter? and how does it change the output. So we run the simulation, it will compute some statistics and we will see how each parameter influences the simulation. So we see that K correlation with the output is positive and uh, so this will be the like the torque coefficient. So this is the sensitivity analysis. And yes, as, as Gabby asked, the first step would be to find out which are the most important few parameters, select them for parameter tuning, tune them for a number of iterations. You will get a response. If that's good enough, then you are done. If you need a more precise model, then you can select the next set of parameters, run the parameter tuning for those five or those 10, and so on, until you get the precision that you need. Ersh, there is another question. Can you do this for the entire system? Yes, but you would have the same issue. So we could do it directly to have some measurement data here that at the test case level we push the button and we measure only the position of the window and compute all the parameters. However, in that case, we will have like 50 parameters. So it's much easier to do by component level if, if you can measure. So in this case, it would make sense to identify the motor separately. And then we know the parameters. And then let's say 
identify the mechanical system separately. By harder you mean from the quality point of view or simply from the computational power? So computational power or might not even find the optimum or it might find a local optimum because okay. what can happen there might not be a difference between so let's stick with this example for the system based on the switch here that I press and how fast the window goes off it will be really difficult for the optimization algorithm to find out if I have a less powerful motor or if it's a bigger friction here at the mechanical part because the two would be will behave the same way so if I have a lower power drive that moves the mechanics or if I have a heavier window it will behave the same way that's one part the other part obviously I will have much more parameters so yes the computational power needed also grows exponentially with the number of parameters it doesn't grow linearly because it needs to try out all the possible combinations okay Thank you for tuning in. If you would like to learn more, check out our other videos and webinars as well, or join us on our training events.